folks, this is Jamil Surfer for Gunstock Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the offices of Tim Forshee with Tim. Jamil, how you doing, how buddy? Are you, buddy? Good, good to see you. And before we start, guys, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we may continue to bring you this content that you guys really like. So, Tim, we're going to talk today about dog attacks. Great. Oh, I mean, or any other animal, but let's start with dogs. Okay. You're walking down the street in your subdivision or wherever you live, and out comes a very angry big dog okay and attacks you all right okay? as a case i know of a friend who shot a dog while he was walking and literally a dog attacked him and wrecked his left hand and he shot the dog okay how does the law protect us or how does the law you know how does it go around a situation like this okay well Essentially, it gets back to the same old question that we've covered before, and that is, again, are you reasonably in fear for an imminent loss of human life? Uh, and then if you really want to look at the statute in Arizona, which is ARS 13405, it then goes a little further to say, or grave bodily injury, okay? Now, to me, I always tell people that's sort of an after-the-fact kind of a concept. In other words, if somebody's attacking me with a machete, I'm not going to say, oh my God, this person could kill me, or, comma, if they don't kill me, comma, perhaps they could cut off one of my fingers, which would be a grave bodily injury, and thus I am justified in using lethal force. You're never going to think about that in hindsight, uh, in foresight rather. In hindsight, though, yeah, if the guy chopped off my finger, it could have could have caused arterial bleeding. It could have cut off my hand. It could have cut off my head. So clearly, I was in fear for my life. Um, it's sort of an after-the-fact concept. But that said, if a dog attacks you and 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 starts biting your hand and is doing serious damage to your hand, are you justified in using lethal force? I can't imagine any situation where that would not be deemed appropriate to use lethal force to stop that dog. So am I in fear for my life? Yeah, because if he finishes with my hand, what's to keep him away from my throat or my bowels? So clearly I'm in fear for my life. And the use of appropriate lethal force there, your friend shot the dog in the head, I would say, thank God that was good aim uh, because that, you know, that dog could have easily killed you, right? In fact, the owner of the dog probably has a lot more to worry about there than the person that stopped the attack. So that's something to think about really, right? Um, with regard to the whole concept of dog attacks, though, what a lot of people get confused on is that what if a dog is attacking not you, but your dog? What if you're walking your dog in a residential mm -hmm. neighborhood and a dog comes running out of the yard and starts attacking your dog and you love your dog? Your dog sleeps in bed with you and your wife. You have a Christmas stocking on the mantle with your dog's name on it. I mean, you love that dog, right? And the answer is, I'm sorry to tell you, dog lovers, you can't use lethal force in that situation unless you're also in fear for your life. So if you're afraid that you're about to get attacked by the dog and the dog is already displaying violence and coming towards you, then you'd be justified in defending yourself. You would never be justified in defending your dog because under the state of the law in Arizona, and I believe every other state in the U.S. right now, a dog is property. No matter how much you love it and, and uh, it, you, it feels like a member of the family, legally it is not. It is property. It has the same rights as that chair you're sitting on right now. And as you probably know, we may have covered this in an earlier video, you can never ever legally use lethal force to defend property only. And if you're defending your dog's life, that's property only. Now, if you're smart enough to shut up until you get a chance to talk to your attorney, the story you tell the police officers was that you were in fear for your life and you shot that dog to save your life and poor little Fifi here who got all torn up was also trying to save your life by intervening in the attack as well and, and Fifi was fighting for your life as well. Now Fifi's just another ally that you have and you haven't committed any crime. And by the way, that's not lying. That's the truth. You were in fear for your own life. Maybe you hadn't thought of that. Maybe you love your dog so much it was in the background. But trust me, you were afraid for your own life as well. So that's the thing to remember about animal attacks. If you're defending yourself or your wife or your child, clearly you can use lethal force in an animal attack. If you're defending your animal from the attack of another animal, make sure you understand that you're defending your life, not your animal's life. That's not legal. Okay, that's, a, that's great uh, information, Tim. But now I have a two segues on, on this okay. subject, and one of them is the wild animals. We live in Arizona. We live in areas where we have coyotes, javelinas, bobcats, and often mountain lions. I was going to say, I'm more worried about mountain lions than any of those other ones, yeah. Yeah, because coyotes, I walk every morning in, on the trail in my subdivision, mm -hmm. and I see coyotes. They look at you, and they turn around and run the mm -hmm. other way. Um, Unless they're chasing a rope runner right. with a jetpack in the back. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Looking for Acme branded yeah. on the side of Oh, yeah, like the that. empty Acme boxes <laughs> all over the desert. God, they're everywhere. I mean, this, this coyotes need to work about the, you know, help the environment and not leave the empty Acme boxes everywhere. Um, you but, realize yeah. everybody watching this under the age of 40 has no idea what you're talking about. I so. know, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, that's the problem. You know, it's like, yeah. 
it's scary. <laughs> but um, but then again, we see bobcats without a real skittish too. They see you and they mm-hmm. run away. And javelinas are aggressive, and they will come at you making a lot of noise, mm-hmm. but they're not going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't say they're not going to hurt you, but I think it'd be almost unheard of that they could attack you fatally. Yeah, fa- yeah. yeah, they might they might chase you and bump right. you. And or they could have rabies, don't forget. That's you know, right. Small rabies. animals with rabies can kill you. So. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, bat with rabies right. will kill you. But, um, but then again, yeah, we see uh, somebody in one of the internet, you know, group sites in my subdivision ask, is this a bobcat or a mountain lion? And it's like, okay, there's a way of telling. If, the, if you look at it and it runs away, it's a bobcat. If you look at it and it eats your face, it's a mountain lion. <laughs> so you can tell them. Tell pretty apart. easy. Yeah. yeah, pretty easy. But then again, on another side note, cattle. Okay. And you're going to say, what? You grew up on a farm, I grew up on a uh-huh. farm, and we used to see cattle, but not in a subdivision. In a, yeah, you know, a free range and, state like Arizona, you see them where you wouldn't expect sometimes, and, yeah. You know, explain free range is basically this cattle can go everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so they got into our subdivision and there were 23 to 25 head of cattle in our park. Yeah, they damage and whatever, but what if a bull comes charging you? Mm-hmm. And, Big, well, for, for all these course. questions, regardless of what kind of life, uh, wildlife it is, whether it's a domestic uh, bull, uh, which sometimes I've seen don't act too domesticated, right? They can act pretty damn aggressive. Whether it's a mountain lion, a bobcat, whether it's a possum, right? Um, the, the question is always going to be the exact same question. Are you reasonably in fear for your life? Mm-hmm. And if you are, you're justified in using lethal force. And okay. carry if for a bull, carry something more than a nine millimeter. I, well, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to be trying to stop a two thousand pound charging bull with my nine millimeter. That's for darn sure. But then again, so does that mean every time you go out on a walk that you're going to carry a, a forty five seventy lever action? I mean, that's asking a lot too. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So you know, it's if you're in an area where you expect that it's possible, you might see a large bear or a mountain lion, or you know, there's there's some rogue bull that's loose that's actually killed somebody in that area. A, don't hike there. But B, now you might want to consider carrying something that's a little bit more serious than your normal sized handgun, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, Tim. Absolutely. Appreciate your help. And like always, guys, thanks for watching. And please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patron.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.